Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the Cadherin superfamily. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, we are in the process of discussing type 1 classical Cadherins. Okay, and we've seen uh, that type 1 classical Cadherins have these five uh, extracellular Cadherin domains uh, on their extracellular portion. They then have a single membrane spanning alpha helix, which uh, crosses the membrane. Okay, then they have this cytoplasmic tail, and then their carboxylic acid terminus is intracellularly. Okay, and we've seen that the way that these uh, classical cadherins are going to join two cells together is for a direct cell-cell interaction and specifically it's through this N-terminal extracellular cadherin domain here. Okay, so the final one. Okay, and these two will link together and that's how we're going to get this direct link between the two cells. Now, what we're going to talk about now is how the cytoplasmic tail here is going to link up to the cytoskeleton of the cell. Okay, so let's just give some motivation for this. So let's just draw a little picture of a cell here. Okay, so here's the nucleus. Now, this is the question, okay? This is the motivation for understanding the uh, cytoskeleton, okay? Um, this this picture, what is actually holding a cell in the same shape? Why does the cell not change shape? Why does it have a permanent shape? Well, it is not the cell membrane which holds it in that shape. The cell membrane is a gloop, okay? It would quite happily change shape easily. Okay, and that means that we are going to have to have something more here, because at the moment, if we just left this picture like so, okay, these uh, classical cadherins are just anchored in the cell membranes, but that is not a secure structure. You know, this is just gloop, okay, so you've anchored gloop to gloop. It's not a very, you know, it's nothing really, okay. Uh, this is not structurally sound yet. We need to attach these cytoplasmic tails to the structure that is actually rigid within cells, the structure that actually holds cells in their shapes, basically. Okay, and the concept that I'm trying to get at here is the concept of the cytoskeleton. So the rigid portion of a cell is the cytoskeleton. So this is quite a um, immature picture of a cell, really. Okay, we draw it like this because it's nice and simple and it looks nice, but in reality, the cytoplasm is not just gloop, okay? The cytoplasm is full of a protein meshwork, okay? So there are proteins everywhere in the cytoskeleton, and these form a very rigid meshwork, and it is this meshwork here that is going to hold the cell in its shape. It will hold the cell membrane up in the uh, shape that it wants it to be in. Okay, right. Uh, and this is the rigid structure that cells have, and this is the concept of the cytoskeleton, this meshwork that you have uh, that is holding a cell in its fixed shape. Okay, cyto means pertaining to a cell, and then a skeleton is uh, a rigid structure that's going to hold something up, so the human skeleton holds our body up, basically. Okay, and it's the same for the cytoskeleton, this rigid meshwork of proteins is what holds the cell in its uh, continuous shape, basically. Okay, so this is the real rigid structure that you have within cells, and let's just add a little bit of colour on. So we've got loads of these protein uh, filaments here. Okay, and we'll come on to some of the major components of the cytoskeleton in just a moment. Okay, uh, and it's the cytoskeleton that we are going to attach the cytoplasmic tail of each of these classical cadherins to. Okay, and that means that we really are going to attach two cells together. Because now, this classical cadherin here will be attached to the cytoskeleton of cell 1 here, and this classical cadherin here will be attached to the cytoskeleton of cell 2. So we've attached the two cytoskeletons together. So now we really have attached the two cells together. Okay, right. So we now want to look at one of the components of the cytoskeleton, and we're going to look at the component that's going to be relevant for us discussing classical cadherins. We'll see 
another component of it later uh, on when we discuss uh, desmosomal cadherins. Okay, right, so the component that we are going to talk about now is actin, okay, so actin filaments. Right, so these are one of the key components of the cytoskeleton of all cells. Okay, so let's just have a little bit of a discussion of the structure of actin filaments. Okay, right. So the first thing we need to discuss is that actin is a little globular protein. Okay, so this little ball here, this is going to represent an actin monomer. Okay, an actin filament is going to be a polymer of absolutely loads of actin monomers. Okay, so we will color this single actin monomer here in in blue. Now, actin monomers, because they are a globular protein, are often called G-actin. Okay, so we could call this a G-actin molecule. Okay, and the G here stands for globular. Okay, so if you hear someone talking about G-actin, that just refers to the monomer of an actin filament. Okay, the little protein on its own. Okay, and this is a single polypeptide. Right, now to create an actin filament, we're firstly going to create a structure known as an actin protofilament, okay? And then we're going to create an actin filament. Okay, right, so we'll start off with an actin protofilament. So an actin protofilament is going to be a, a right-handed helix, uh, so helical structure, uh, which is made up by polymerizing actin molecules together. Okay, so firstly we'll just handle the polymerization of actin molecules together, and then we'll talk about the fact that it's going to assemble up into uh, a right-handed alpha helix and what that means. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to polymerize actin monomers together. Okay, like so. So you're going to join loads and loads and loads of actin monomers together to make a huge, great chain. Okay, and this is now known as an actin protofilament. An actin filament is slightly more complicated. It's actually going to consist of two of these things intertwined with one another, and we'll come to an actin filament in a moment. So this is an actin protofilament here.